final item of business today is the members' business debate on motion number 7331 in the name of Graham Day on Scotland more aware of fair trade. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Graham Day to open the debate. Seven minutes, Mr Day. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, a recent poll revealed that almost nine out of ten Scots are aware of fair trade. It's a remarkable level of awareness and one which would, in most cases, I suspect, trump that of who their constituency MSP is, let alone those of us who are charged with representing them via the regional list. This high-level recognition of, the fair trade, of fair trade and what it stands for, however, perhaps should not surprise us. Earlier this year, Scotland was one of the first countries in the world to become a fair trade nation, a fantastic achievement that would not have been possible without the dedication and commitment of people of all ages and backgrounds throughout Scotland. And whatever else achieving fair trade nation status does, it surely highlights the shared vision we Scots have, a vision of Scotland as a good global citizen committed to playing its part in addressing poverty. Scottish support for fair trade products and the ethical business practices this promotes growing, of course, reflects an understanding of the concept of fair trade, an increased uh, understanding of the concept. Awareness levels have risen from 64% of the population in 2006 to 88% earlier this year. And pleasingly, a third of Scots are now believed to purchase fair trade products on a regular basis, compared to just 20% as recently as two years ago. The fair trade movement really has come a long way since its beginnings in the 1960s. It certainly has long shed its perhaps one-time image as the preserve of middle-aged, middle-class do-gooders. And it is to the credit of Scotland and this country's inherent sense of fairness that we are at the forefront of that. Hundreds of community-based groups have sprung up in our towns, our villages, cities, schools, colleges, universities and places of worship promoting fair trade. And whether it's because they have bought into the ethos of the movement or are simply responding to demand or a bit of both, so supermarkets are active in providing opportunities for ethical shopping, with a market doubling every two years. Sainsbury's, who we claim to be the UK's largest fair trade retailer with a 22% share of the market, report their sales of fair trade goods rose 5% last year to £288 million. Included in there are sales of 650 million bananas, generating £4 million of fair trade money going to help small farming communities in the Dominican Republic, Colombia, St Lucia, Panama, Peru and Ghana. And in keeping with the rise in, in the fair trade movement in Scotland, Sainsbury's aimed to be selling £1 billion of fair trade products annually by 2020. Now, in order that I cannot be accused of promoting one supermarket chain, though, let me also mention that Morrison's, Asda, Lidl, the Co-op and the Spar in my own constituency all are fair trade engaged as well. But my motion, presiding officer, was principally about noting the achievements of communities and organisations across Scotland, and specifically the area that I represent, in buying into fair trade and what it stands for. The Angus Zone, which covers all of the county, achieved fair trade status in 2012, nine years after the local council first agreed to support the concept, and four years after Montrose and my colleague Nigel Don's neighbouring constituency became the first Angus fair trade town. Within that zone, two of the four towns in my own constituency have secured fair trade status, with a third, Kerry Muir, currently working towards this goal. The achievements of our broad and Carnoustie in getting there were recognised by Angus Council, awarding them civic receptions in November of last year and February 2013, respectively. Fittingly, Carnoustie's reception took place on February the 25th, the same day that Scotland became a fair trade nation. And it's remarkable to witness the speed at which participation in fair trade can grow. We take the example of our broad, where we now have five of the 12 places of worship having gained fair trade status. Having had only one school, Arbroad High, involved at the outset, we now have two primaries in Burbrothick and Muirfield in the fold, with Wardykes and the Academy seeking to follow suit. Angus College is also participating through their catering outlet, Cafe 56, and their charity shop. All the co-ops in the town have fair trade status, along with Boots the Chemist, and a variety of cafes, a guest house, Arbroath Coral Society, the local credit union, and the furniture recycling project. Look at Carnoustie. Three of the four Carnoustie schools are now actively involved in the local fair trade movement. Carlogie Primary operates a fair trade cafe once a month out of the Panbride Church Hall. Woodlands holds a fair trade cafe once a term, and both have achieved fair trade school status. Carnoustie High School, though not a fair trade school, has also found creative ways to be supportive of the ethical buying scheme. Pupils have their own uh, fair trade forum and can buy fair trade products from the tuck shop. Additionally, one pupil is being invited to sit on the local committee to provide a youthful perspective on fair trade. And all Church of Scotland premises in the town are involved with the fair trade group. 
as well as promoting ethical purchase in the Carnoustie fair trade movement, is about buying local produce, thus reducing the carbon footprint and helping boost Scotland's industry. In a bid to get this message across, the committee has arranged fashion shows and tasting events. A number of the businesses in the town have also pledged their support to the cause. Kerry Muir's Fair Trade Forum has been up and running since November of last year and will shortly be submitting their application for Fair Trade Town status. The Glens and Kerry Muir Old, Old Parish Church is already a Fair Trade Church, and the forum's efforts are being further supported by Webster's High School and the two primaries, North Muir and South Muir. The Fair Trade message continues to be spread in Kerry Muir from activists attending the Corte Highland Games just outside of the town to staging a, a local heat for the upcoming Angus Bake Off competition being staged on September the 14th at 4 for Mart as part of the Taste of Angus Festival. I have no doubt that the efforts of these organisations and the various uh, Angus events promoting Fair Trade have contributed to the positive association Scots now make with the movement and will in time result in more towns like Kerry Muir being added to the growing list of areas in Scotland that hold Fair Trade status. Status. Fair trade is, about, is becoming accessible to everyone, with thousands of fair trade certified products for sale through retail and catering outlets across the country. Anyone can show their support for ethical business during our weekly shop. Finally, fair trade is about being the better nation we aspire to be, because by consciously supporting better prices, decent working conditions and fairer terms uh, of trade for farmers and workers around the world, with each purchase we make, we're expressing our support for the same social justice to be upheld in our own country and in our communities. Though the gesture may seem real, relatively small, the people of Scotland recognise the moral value of buying fair trade, and I'm proud to represent a constituency that demonstrates a strong commitment to increasing participation in the movement within our fair trade nation. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, can I note the degree of cross-party support this motion attracted? Clearly, support for fair trade and all that it stands for is as widespread within this Parliament as it is across Scotland. And I thank all 40 members who signed the motion and allowed this debate to take place. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now turn to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes, please. And I call Ken McIntosh to be followed by Fiona MacLeod. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And uh, can I begin with my thanks to Graham Day uh, for bringing uh, today's debate and also for his own efforts in supporting fair trade here in Scotland. I suspect most of us in the Chamber today are conscious that, above all, fair trade is a grassroots movement. It's a movement that harnesses the power of each one of us as small consumers uh, and turns that into a globally powerful force for change. And I'm particularly pleased that we have now reached the stage uh, where we have harnessed the power of Scotland as a country uh, joining Wales to promote fair trade at a national level. In a moment, I want to look at some of the actions we can take at a national level through the Scottish Government and through the Parliament. Uh, but in doing so, I don't want to lose sight of our own individual contributions. Uh, it's only a few years since fair trade was the preserve of Oxfam shops, our churches or members of a few justice and peace groups. And I've had the privilege of chairing the East Renfrewshire Fair Trade Steering Group through much of the last decade. And I'm only too aware of the fantastic efforts of the, uh, the committed few. It's thanks to those enlightened, uh, liberally minded, socially aware citizens that companies as diverse as Cadbury's, Marks and Spencer's, Tate and Lyle can now parade their fair trade credentials alongside the most important ethical trader of them all. And I refer, of course, to the co-op still at the forefront, not just of the fair trade movement, but uh, of a more ethical approach to business, employment and to community support. But although fair trade has made the jump to the commercial mainstream, it still requires our individual efforts to promote fair practices and tackle unfair and exploitative trading relationships. One that many members may be familiar with, uh, but which is still to reach the levels of public awareness, uh, the nine out of 10 uh, highlighted by Graham Day in today's motion, for example, is that of fairly traded footballs. It has been estimated that 70% of the world's hand-stitched sports balls, including footballs, are manufactured in one district in Pakistan, often by children. Until recently, the industry has been characterized by low pay, uh, poor working conditions, and children forcing to work because adult wages are insufficient to support a family. Now, thanks to the fair trade movement, there are a dozen fair trade certified producers from the same region. And through the fair trade premium, local people have benefited from a water purification system, from the introduction of basic health insurance, as well as a new microcredit fund. I was delighted when my own local authority, East Renfrewshire Council, alongside uh, Chambers of Commerce and others, promoted a fair trade football competition for the second time earlier this year. I know my West of Scotland colleague, Neil Bibby, has been even more ambitious with a major five-a-side competition in Paisley. And I can tell members that that, in turn, has led to an even more attractive fixture. 
MSPs against MPs at Celtic Park this Sunday. Now, who says supporting fair trade can't be enjoyable? And anyone who hasn't put their name down yet for the gain, and I'm looking in particular at the minister, who I happen to know would be a very useful addition to the team. Uh, if you were to contact Neil Bibby, I'm sure your talents would be appreciated, as well as your support for fair trade. But, presiding officer, despite the growing success and the increased awareness of fair trade, there are many challenges still facing us. A couple of years ago, our local committee in East Renfrewshire promoted a fair trade school dinners competition amongst local pupils. I have to say it was a great success, hundreds of uh, thoughtful and very tasty menus uh, drawn up by uh, local children. And the, the council school catering department was very uh, supportive, but it also became clear quite early on that they were torn by conflicting official policy and guidance. As much as they wished to support fair trade, they thought a higher priority needed to go to procurement policy, which in turn clearly placed a premium on price over ethical purchasing. And that's why, yet again, I would draw the Minister's attention to the forthcoming procurement bill, to the Scottish Government's own purchasing power, to its role as exemplar of best practice. Yes, we can all make a difference as individual citizens, as MSPs, uh, but there are actions we can take as a Parliament to promote Scotland, the fair trade country. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call Fiona MacLeod to be followed by Nanette Milne. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I add my thanks and uh, congratulations to Graeme Dee for bringing this important uh, debate to Parliament, but also my thanks because it means we get to talk up our local constituencies and the, the work that they're doing. And as Ken McIntosh said, fair trade is about a grassroots movement, so I think it's appropriate that we take this opportunity. Can I also give the Chamber and Graeme Day my apologies? I have to leave as soon as I've made my speech. Uh, my apologies. In Strath Kelvin and Bearsdale, in my constituency, fair trade actually has a very long history. Uh, Balmore Coach House which has now raised over a million pounds in selling fair trade goods, has been on the go for over 20 years. Eastern Bartonshire achieved fair trade zone status a few years ago, and that status was renewed again this year. Lenzie is now a fair trade town, and achieved that status this year. And on the 3rd of October, we're going to celebrate the achievement of fair trade status by Lenzie with a savour the flavour evening with the co-op. And that reminds me that Bearsden and Mulgai have a very strong and hard-working team working towards that. It reminds me because one of the first events in Bearsden and Mulgai was a savour the flavour. And I ended up as the chef's assistant in the evening. Nobody got food poisoning. It was all made with fair trade food from Sainsbury's. Um, and they gave me an apron in appreciation, which I definitely appreciated. Bearsden and Mulgai, I was pleased to hear Graeme Day talk about a fashion show because I thought Bears Denim Guy were the first to do a fair trade fashion show, so we weren't. We were the second. Um, this June, Eastern Barnshire Cycle Co-op, who have a festival every year in Bishop Briggs, decided to make it a fair trade cycle festival, and they managed to do it and get the accreditation for it. So well done them. There's two last issues that I want to, to pick up on. One of them was about procurement, following what Ken McIntosh was saying. Uh, I have a constituent who's working really hard on fair trade school uniforms. And she has got into quite a few local schools where it's through the Parent Teachers Association that we're buying our sweatshirts and, and what have you. But she, as Ken McIntosh said, she sees the procurement bill as her way to get this whole thing debated in Parliament and perhaps get fair trade realised that when you are doing purchasing, there are other reasons than the pennies and pounds. There is the moral reason for why we should be doing some purchasing. Um, and one of the other groundbreaking areas that in Eastern Bartonshire is that we have the first uh, suite of nurseries that are fair trade. And I think that to finish on that, I think it's quite, quite a useful point because if you can talk to two-year-olds and three-year-olds in a way that they understand and make sure that their snacks are fairly traded products. It's all about where it starts, isn't it? Young folk can understand that message. Ken McIntosh talked about you know, young kids in Pakistan making footballs. When you're two or three, you can begin to understand that when, you, when, that's, when, when you're, that's presented to you in your kind of language. So fair trade is something that it's... It makes, us, it makes us as individuals feel good, but more importantly, it's what we as a country can do to support parts of the world that don't have the riches that we have. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I now call Nanette Milne to be followed by George Adam. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also begin by thanking Graham Day for tabling this motion and achieving a member's debate on what is a very important subject. It's also very timely following the publication during the summer of the Scottish Fair Trade Forum survey, which showed not only an increase in awareness of the concept of fair trade, but also a rise in the purchasing of fair trade products in Scotland. All this has been achieved, of course, in the very year that Scotland was awarded the fair, fair trade status, making it the second nation in the UK to gain this accolade and one of the first worldwide. With all Scottish cities and 62 towns across the country holding similar recognition, I think we can all be proud of what Scots have worked towards in a relatively short period of time. As a regional MSP for the North East, I was pleased to see that the motion makes reference to Angus, and it's commendable that for over a decade the Council there, of whatever political persuasion, um, has promoted the idea of fair trade across the, country, the county. Montrose became the first fair trade town in 2008, followed by Montrose Academy as the first fair trade school in that area. Also, the range of shops, restaurants, cafes, hotels and supermarkets supporting the fair trade initiative in Angus stretches, as we've heard, from Kirimur to Carnoustie and from Forfar to Arbroath. The range of products on offer is as diverse as coffee and rice to cotton and sports balls sold in order to benefit projects in places like Pakistan, Kenya and Malawi. The latter, of course, as we know, being a country with which Scotland has had ties for centuries. My home city of Aberdeen was the first city in Scotland to achieve fair trade status back in 2004. And it's interesting to note that this award was made to the people of Aberdeen in recognition of the businesses, schools, faith groups and individuals who worked so hard to gain this prestigious rating. The commitment of groups and organisations to gaining fair trade status is not automatic or by any means easy. Renewal for towns and cities takes place every two years. And in the case of Aberdeen, the next date when the Fair Trade Steering Group will have to list their achievements is next year, 2014. I wish them well, but given the fact that schools in my area, such as Dice Academy and Area Hall Primary, have already successfully achieved Fair Trade School status, with other bodies working towards similar goals, I think I can be assured that Aberdeen will go from strength to strength. My local church in Aberdeen, Cults Parish Church, has a trade craft stall situated in the hall after the service every Sunday and has had for a number of years, offering a wide range of fairly traded products such as food items, cards and gifts. And I have to say that at a time, at a time when supermarkets perhaps come under uh, undue criticism, their commitment to fair trade should be acknowledged. As a customer, I find the fair trade bananas sold at Asda to be of exceptional quality, as is some of the fair trade ground coffee. And in my local co-op, where I often buy wine at weekends, their fair trade Pinot Grigio is as good as you'll get anywhere. I was also interested to learn of the work of Sainsbury in promoting the fair trade through their ambassador programme, whereby individuals, some 500 within the UK, spread awareness of the initiative across local communities. Their ambitious 20 by 20 strategy aims to increase sales of fairly traded produce by a billion pounds by 2020, and will see an expansion in the range of goods available to customers. Presiding officer, targets such as these mean that organisations are hopefully not simply relying on what they've already achieved. We mustn't be complacent, but we must aim to work even harder to gain a better deal for developing countries across the globe. A simple thing like choosing to buy a fair trade bar of chocolate instead of a regular bar should be easy and can make a big difference to families and communities in other parts of the world. So to conclude, we need to encourage still more people to think of where their shopping comes from and to consider buying, where possible, goods which are fairly traded. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call George Adam to be followed by Claudia Beamish. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to thank Graham Day for bringing this debate to the Chamber and also speak as the co-convener of the cross-party group in fair trade, along with James Kelly. It was him and I that single-handedly brought its fair trade nation status to Scotland. Uh, the two of us decided we would take the full credit after the meetings that we convened during that, uh, year, that year we were working towards it. But nine out of ten people in Scotland are aware of fair trade. 
That is quite incredible when you think about it from even something as simple as 10 years ago, because 10 years ago you could probably walk into any store and your chances of actually getting a fair trade to coffee was next to impossible. You would have to go to a specialist store or one of the specialist church-based stores or uh, one like in my own area in Paisley, uh, the Rainbow Turtle Shop, which has been going for 10 years, and they were the only ones that stocked absolutely everything. In fact, they stocked quite a lot of stuff that uh, go into our constituency office as well now as well. But the other thing is we have to remember here is, yes, that people actually are aware of the fair trade brand, but this isn't just a brand. This isn't just like a soap powder or anything else. This is something that can make a difference in people's lives. This is a declaration of intent that we actually want to live in a world that can make a difference to other people in that world as well. And I think we have to remember that as well. It's great that people know what the brand is, but we have to keep this isn't us finished. Fair trade nation status isn't as finished. I remember way back when uh, I was in a council in Remshire Council, Liz Cotton of Remshire, uh, Rainbow Paisley's Rainbow Turtle Shop, she was concerned that going for Remshire County status was actually going to take us away from, you know, just we'll get that and that's us finished, we won't move any further. And I've remembered that since that day because that's not the destination. Getting the plaque, getting the sign, that's not the destination. The reason why we want to do it is to make the difference in the people's lives that we're talking about here. Look, uh, the Minister will be aware that we had some people over from Malawi from a cooperative this year and the year before. Uh, they make rice. It's not technically fair trade. It's not been given fair trade the brand itself, because that's another debate where you can actually, it's quite expensive for a lot of these people to go through that process. But uh, they are a complete cooperative and work together and it makes such a difference in their community. And one of the things I think the Minister, President Officer and myself were shocked at at this meeting was that something as simple as when they talk about mechanisation, they are talking about basically just getting an oxen to actually uh, be able to help with the field. They are not talking about some state-of-the-art equipment. In fact, one of the gentlemen looked at a farm, uh, some farm equipment that had been abandoned when they were driving through Scotland. And he says they would use that in a second because to him that would have made an unbelievable difference to their lifestyle and what they were actually trying to achieve. And I think when we have these debates, we have to remember that, yes, things have gone really well. But we've got to remember the fact that this is only the beginning. We've got to keep moving. It is a declaration of intent, as I said. It's a statement of the values. It's the values that we have as a nation and uh, the fact that we want to work with fellow nations in the world to actually make a difference. And it's one of these things that young people automatically get involved in these types of uh, campaigns because they can see it makes a difference. There's no, not the cynicism of other politics. They can actually get hard, work hard, and make a difference in something else. And their idealism is attracted to that. Now, I'm saying some of us here probably get a wee bit older and cynical as the years have gone on. But I think that's some of my idealism that I want to hold on to. I want to think that Scotland can stand on its own and actually be uh, the, the important in this uh, the for fair trade. So, as I say, this isn't the end, presiding officer. The campaign continues. We're not just looking for brand recognition, as I've already said, because it's far, far more important than this. This is about wanting to make a change in the world and making a difference in people's lives. Thank you very much. And I now call Claudia Beamish. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. As a regular at attendee of the cross-party group for fair trade and also a member of the Scottish Court Party uh, parliamentary group, I would like to also thank Graham Day for bringing this members' debate to the Chamber today. Along with many other people, I am delighted that Scotland has become one of the first uh, fair trade nations this February. Scotland is now considered to be at the forefront of the ethical movement of fair trade and is one that we must seek to foster and further. The Scottish Government initially set a target for 50% of the population to know about fair trade, with an ultimate goal of reaching 75%. This target was exceeded at an incredible 81%, but and, sh and we should encourage policymakers to raise expectations further, as well as our local communities. It is individuals, communities, and schools, churches and local businesses across Scotland that will help bring this movement forward. And just as a quick aside, um, in Selkirk there was a fair trade fashion show and there was actually an MSP on the catwalk and I'm not at liberty to say who it was except that it wasn't me. Okay. Um, among other successes for, um, is the South Lanarkshire um, fair trade zone and among their successes is the status that is acknowledges that 81 retailers and catering outlets um, selling a minimum of two fair trade products, as well as having an active steering group, is to be recognised today. 
Individuals, too, have demonstrated their ability to catalyse change. At Abington Primary School, where I used to work, a primary four pupil felt so compelled by fair trade principles that he convinced the school to host a fair trade event and asked his local shop off his own back to stock fair trade goods. Scotland's dedication to ensuring that developing countries get a fair deal for their goods has exceeded expectations and we must continue to move forward. However, it is my contention that the environmental standards required of fair trade producers are such that we do not have to worry so much about the carbon footprint and the food miles as we would maybe with other products and, and, and standards. And so I would welcome particularly the import of these goods with less concern for the food miles involved. Earlier this year, I attended a fair trade event uh, supported by the Dumfries and Galloway Fair Trade Group at Crema Galloway near Castle Douglas in my region. This visit drew into sharp focus for me the synergies between local and global ethical working. Many will know that Crema Galloway is an organic farm selling local produce, including delicious ice cream, which now has a vibrant visitor centre. At the event, I met with Justine Watalunga, a fair trade coffee farmer from Uganda who toured the UK as part of Fair Trade, fair trade Fortnight. Uh, she is part of the Gumatindo Coffee Cooperative, which brings together over 3,000 coffee, coffee farmers. And she has highlighted how involvement in fair trade has brought additional income and has allowed women in her community to come together to start a nursery and primary school for local, local children. And this inspirational real model of democratic local decision making is also part of fair trade. And the local global synergy was symbolised for me by a very good cup of coffee from her farm with cream right from where we are in Cream of Galloway. Looking forward, there are some issues for us to address as we are, we are looking at the future of fair trade. I believe we should be doing everything to promote fair trade as parliamentarians. And Kezia Dugge, a colleague of mine, asked Nicola Sturgeon recently about the um, procurement bill. And Nicola Sturgeon answered, the Fair Trade Forum has agreed to work with the Scottish Government to progress the, uh, and the uptake of fair and ethically traded goods and services through public procure procurement. So can the Minister highlight any ways in which that's gone forward? In the CPG, we have concerns. We have discussed product description when it's only part of the ingredients of a fair trade. We've also discussed arrangements by which supermarkets promote and sell fair trade products and issues of, around markup, which are concerns. These are difficult issues, but they shouldn't be ducked. Finally, I want to pose a question which, in my view, the whole global community, especially more developed countries such as our own, should be addressing. While fair trade is a laudable model to be supported, how do we contribute to addressing the imbalance in global trade structures and in global economic and financial institutions? What about the Ugandan coffee farmer next to Justin's farm who does not benefit from fair trade? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can I now invite the Minister to respond to the debate? Uh, the Minister is Hamza Youssef, and you have seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm very honoured to have the uh, opportunity to close this debate. I thank uh, Graeme Day for bringing it to the Chamber, his constituency. I, uh, Angus South, of course, uh, achieved uh, fair trade zone status last year. So thank him for putting forward the motion, but also for all the members for their contributions about uh, uh, fair trade events uh, that took, take place in their local schools, uh, in, their, in their local churches, uh, even in their uh, local uh, supermarkets uh, as well. Uh, the Scottish Government uh, is very proud to support the Scottish Fair Trade Forum since uh, 2007, and it was a real pleasure for me to be able to, to announce in February Scotland's uh, achievement uh, of fair trade nation status. Uh, following the report, can Scotland call itself a fair trade nation? Uh, two things, uh, two themes that were picked up upon by Ken McIntosh and uh, Fiona McLeod, uh, which were important when I made that announcement. One was uh, footballs, because we used the footballs that come from Sialkot, the district in, in Pakistan. Uh, many, uh, many uh, of Ken McIntosh's, many of Mr McIntosh's uh, uh, constituents will come from that area, actually, uh, indeed. Uh, so footballs were used and we, we, we demonstrated that these fair trade footballs and had a kickabout with these fair trade footballs uh, at a local school in the east end of Glasgow. I have to say, uh, playing with 10, 11 year olds at a game of football uh, really made me feel quite old because I was puffed out after about the first 10, 15 minutes. But it was a great way of getting that message, just as Fiona McLeod was saying earlier in the debate, a great way of getting that message in a fun way. And I was talking to the kids about fair trade footballs and I asked them, do you have any questions? 
The kid put up his hand and said, can we get the ball, sir, and start playing? So it was, uh, they got the message, but um, nonetheless, it was a great way uh, of doing that. And the important thing about the footballs, uh, and I really thank uh, Ken McIntosh for bringing the, the issue up. The great thing about the, the important thing about the footballs is, look, um, in, a, in a day and age where a footballer can be sold for 100 million pounds and nobody really blinks much of an eye, and nobody gives enough thought to uh, the football that that 100 million pound foot uh, will be kicking. Uh, and it's a, you know, as, as, an, as our national game and our national sport, uh, there's a lot more that we can do in this respect. And uh, Graham Spears, the, the, the columnist, wrote a good article on it. I would commend it to anybody to read uh, and certainly set us the challenge as the government uh, and indeed as the parliament to see what else we can and do in that front. So I think the footballs are a, are a great way of getting the message across um, as well. Uh, the Scottish Fair Trade Forum, of course, was instrumental in driving forward the agenda to achieve this accolade of a fair trade uh, nation status. Uh, of course, Wales was the first country uh, on the, in, in the globe to, to get that accolade. But I'm pleased that we can say now we are the other fair trade nation in the world. Uh, at the weekend, I was in an event in Perth, and uh, the First Minister uh, of Wales, Carlin Jones, was, uh, he was great. He gave a video message uh, thanking and um, uh, congratulating Scotland, I should say, uh, on achieving this status. Uh, I'm delighted uh, at the opinion poll that's been highlighted by Graham Day and other members across the chamber that a number of, number of people in Scotland who support fair trade continues to rise. That brand recognition, although I accept George Adams' point, it's much more uh, than just a brand, but that recognition of fair trade is phenomenal. Uh, I was at, the, uh, at Perth, the, the event at the weekend. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the people there uh, uh, receiving the award, Tracy McGee, she got the award and she got involved in fair trade because her two-year-old daughter at the time at the supermarket pointed to the fair trade sign and recognised the fair trade sign at two years old. So she started getting involved in making uh, her child's nursery a uh, fair trade nursery. So it does have great recognition, but undoubtedly uh, more uh, that we can do. Uh, one of the great things that was mentioned by everybody across this chamber was the amount of different people that are involved in the fair trade movement. I think that's one of the best things about fair trade and the fair trade movement, the difference of, from you know, business people and businesses, is, you know, is, uh, uh, tea companies, chocolate companies, all the rest of it, right down to local schools, is, as were mentioned, thousands and thousands of people uh, are determined to make sure that we send a message from Scotland that we don't believe in the inequality of the supply chain, that we want to do something uh, in order to change and fix that uh, for a much better, much more equal and a prosperous society for all. Uh, Scotland is a caring nation determined to ensure producers in the developing world are paid a fair price for their goods. And that was, as I say, demonstrated in villages, towns and cities uh, across the entire country. Uh, P6 children of uh, Kalogi. Primary school in Carnoustie, uh, as, as Mr Day was talking about, they run Fair Logie, a successful fair trade cafe and tuck shop, uh, which benefits the local community and helps to raise awareness. Uh, the children of St Elizabeth's Primary School in Hamilton, who I met at the weekend uh, as well, uh, they have a rap song, uh, which is, uh, they've now recorded as a single, and in fact is played across many schools. I won't attempt uh, to sing it, presiding officer. No, I really it would uh, do this debate a disservice if I was to even... Uh, attempt it. Uh, the Community Award, they received the Community Award, which recognises uh, the work and endeavour that they had put in uh, to that. And I want to make a special uh, mention, uh, as, as Nanette Milne did as well, of churches. I think the churches uh, in Scotland uh, can give themselves a thoroughly well deserved pat on the back for the efforts that they've made uh, in regards to fair trade and the fair trade movement. I think it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that without their efforts, we would not have achieved fair trade nation status uh, at the time uh, that we did, and it would have been a lot more difficult uh, without the efforts of the churches. So I want to put that very much uh, on record. Um, Claudia Beamish and others mentioned uh, legislation. I agree, legislation uh, can most definitely uh, play an important role. Uh, third sector organisations, NGOs uh, from Oxfam all the way through to the many other hundreds that are working uh, on the fair trade movement and indeed the Scottish Fair Trade Forum have had discussions both with the Deputy First Minister, uh, previous to that to, to Alec Neil, the Cabinet Secretary who was leading uh, the procurement bill legislation and indeed local MSPs including myself uh, I have held uh, meetings to try to feed in uh, to the procurement uh, bill. I will endeavour to get a, a response uh, to Claudia Beamish to see the update uh, on that. I know that that is being most definitely thought uh, and there is a difficulty in truth when it comes to legislation in that uh, when it comes to directives 
uh, particular brands and naming particular brands uh, can be difficult, but underlying principles is perhaps where we can find a way, uh, most certainly, of uh, getting a positive outcome. Uh, I also uh, want to, to say I was delighted um, that Claudia Beamish mentioned Christine from, from Uganda, because uh, having met Christine uh, as well at the, the Fair Trade uh, the status announcement, uh, having met uh, farmers from uh, Malawi, having met uh, those involved in fair trade from Indonesia, uh, it's hearing from them the difference that fair trade can make in their lives brings it all, all, all home and brings it to, to life. Because uh, there, for all the people that have recognition of fair trade and for all the people that are involved in fair trade, there's still a lot of people who go past the fair trade products on the shelf and don't put out their hand uh, to, to pick up that product. Uh, and so we still have a heck of a lot of work to do. Just as George Adam was saying uh, throughout his speech, it's important that this is the beginning uh, and not the end. And let's face it, I mean, uh, at that event in Perth, I had uh, fair trade candy floss, uh, brownies, crisps and chocolate. I mean, never has been doing good work ever tasted and felt so good. So it's an easy thing for all of us to do. Just to conclude, and in closing, presiding officer, I'm very proud, just as all the members here, uh, have been uh, of everything that we've achieved in Scotland, uh, of the way that people have worked together in communities up and down the country uh, to, to help us achieve this fantastic status. My belief that uh, countries the size uh, of Scotland can set an example, just as George Adams was saying, uh, for the rest of the world, that through our commitment to fairness and equality, we can really uh, be a standard bearer for other nations of the world. I'm delighted to make the most important announcement, uh, indeed, not the most important announcement, an important announcement. Uh, that I will be playing at the football match on Sunday, uh, the Hallow Turf at Celtic Park. I knew that would get one round of applause uh, from somebody. But uh, more than that, I'm delighted the MSPs, MPs, councillors, elected representatives of all parties, all colours, all hues, have played their part. Uh, and I think you should give yourself a, a, a pat on the back for that as well, because we're leading by example. Uh, but really, the thanks goes uh, to the people of Scotland, just as Nanette Mellon said, in her speech. So, presiding officer, I'm delighted we had this debate. Um, we have achieved a fantastic series, but there's much, much more work uh, to be done. Thank you. Many thanks. That concludes Graham Day's members' debate. Scotland more aware of fair trade. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.